Today, we talk to Jane Holland, who reveals how she transitioned from a career in accountancy to becoming a colour consultant. Let's find out how she built a booming business. Welcome to the Hubcast, brought to you by the Interior Designers Hub, where we help and support interior designers to get trained, get into the industry, and to grow wildly successful businesses. If you want to work in the field you love, create the lifestyle you desire, and make the money you truly deserve, you're in the right place. I'm your host, Kate Hatherall. Let's get into it. I am super excited today to be able to welcome Jane Holland to the Hubcast. Hi, Jane. How are you? Hi, Kate. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, really, really well, thank you. I'm really excited that you're able to join us today. So am I. (laughs) Tell us a little bit about your business and what you do. Right. My business is called Jane Holland Colour and I'm a certified interior colour consultant. Um, After studying interior design for three years, I realised that I favoured colour over all the other subjects that were covered in the course. Um, So I decided to pursue it further and enrolled on a colour consultancy course um, to take me where I am today. Amazing. So tell me a little bit about what a colour consultant does. Right. I advise people on colours um, in the way of paint, fabric, wallpaper for their homes that suit their personality and lifestyle. Um, I think it's all very well to gain inspiration from Pinterest, Instagram, etc, etc. But what you see on those images might not suit your own home um there's so much to take into account when choosing color for your home the aspects of the room um flooring the views the window size and so much more really amazing and so it sounds as though because when you say color consultant i'm automatically thinking kind of yeah like paint swatches or color fans but actually it sounds as though you do a much broader service than that in a way and you actually specify uh wallpapers and things Oh, I do. Um, I'll give you a quick example of a client I've just previously helped. Um, She wanted help with her um, spare bedroom. So it was almost a blank canvas. So she wanted help with choosing paint colours and fabric for a Roman blind. Um, But I had a real in-depth chat with her and I was able to actually get a sample of her carpet. She actually sent it in the post to me. So I had that physically in front of me. So when I was looking at paint colours and fabric samples, I was able to tie in with a, with a carpet as well because I only actually work with online clients. So I ah, try to amazing. get information as possible. Um, yeah. Brilliant. OK. And so working online in that way, that must be quite tricky to kind of, you know, as you say, because it's the aspect of the room, the quality of the light in the room. So that must be quite a challenge at times to be able to specify the right colours for them. Well, what I do is, first off, I send a really, really in-depth questionnaire by email and I ask okay. clients to send back, obviously, the completed questionnaire um, along with any images of the room. Some of them even do a little video tour. Um, and any also any images that might have jumped out at them that they're drawn to. Um, and then that after that, the next stage is where we set up a Zoom call. So they can, not sorry, not a Zoom call, it's either a WhatsApp or a, a video call. Um, so they yep. can walk in the room so I can see it and get a real feel of the space. So yep. that's the next. And then with regards to, I mean, as you said, doing online, it, it must be quite difficult. Um If I'm helping them with, say, um, fabric and wallpaper as well, I always order um, a set of wallpaper samples for myself and a wallpaper set of wallpaper samples for the client, the same as I see them paint out in the post and fabric samples out in the post so they can actually see them in the flesh because it's all very well me doing them a colour board digitally, but we all know that it can look so different on screen than than it can in real life. Absolutely. And then if you've got a set of samples and they've got a set of samples, you know that you're both looking at the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. So um, that's obviously what you do today. And I know that you've got a really super successful business. But have you always been a colour consultant or was there something that you did before becoming an interior designer? Well, I've actually got a 39 career background in accounts. (laughs) 
Wow, <laughs> that's quite different. I've worked in accounts since I was 17. Um, and then when the first lockdown came about um, and we was all working from home, um, I actually took a year sabbatical really okay. to follow my dream, if you like. Um, because it also all came about that when we bought our previous home, um, I really wish back then I'd have studied interior design because I would have done so many things differently. And I think that's mm. what spurred me on to study. Um, so, yeah, so I took the sabbatical. Um, and fortunately, I, I didn't go back. And I'm able to be, you know, make a career out of my um, colour consultancy work. But I also work two days a week in an estate agent alongside my colour consultancy work as well. And that seems to fit in really nicely. I guess you get to like look at everybody's interiors as well. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And so um, obviously a career in accounting, as I said, is very different to a career in interior design and colour consultancy. Have you always had a passion for interior design or is it something that you sort of developed over time? I think it's developed over time. I think previously um, it was more so in my clothes. Funny enough, because I remember okay. where I well, when I was growing up, probably in my late teens, early twenties. Um, I remember funny, funny what you, things you remember, isn't it? A neighbour actually saying to me, "You always look nice in what you wear, and you always seem to be really colour coordinated." Mm. Sort of like inside of me back then, but you know, in enclosed as opposed to interiors. And then as time progressed. Um, I found it more and more interesting regarding my home, especially um, looking around my home and finding that, like, I've got an orange car, burnt orange car. Um, I noticed I had a lot of burnt orange vases. Um, and I thought, do you know what? I never even knew I liked orange. It's really weird. I was obviously attracted to it. And, and I think that's mm. why, as well, it made me want to go on and study f colour further because it just fascinates me <laughs> and how it makes us Amazing. feel when we walk into a room. Absolutely. And colour, you know, there's a huge um, field of science, you know, colour psychology that really does talk, you know, a lot about how colours make us feel and how colours can be applied to really change how we feel about our environments. Oh, exactly. And, you know, and I don't think either you can ever stop learning because um, I also did a colour talk with Joa Studholm from Fur and Ball, which was really yep. In. Um, and I've also done all of Sophie Robinson's colour courses. Um, again, I don't think you could ever stop learning. So, yeah, it's really fun. Absolutely. It almost doesn't feel like a job, if that makes sense. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I know exactly what you mean. And when you're doing something that you love, it feels like you're being paid to, um, to play. And that's, yeah. you know, that's astonishing, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So at what point did you decide, right, this isn't just a hobby for me. This is going to be something that I'd like to try and make into a career. I think it was um, when I'd gone off on my um, sabbatical um, and I joined, obviously, Hub Insiders because um, I didn't have a clue on what to do next. You know, how do I set up a business? How do I market my brand? How do I get clients? So um, um Belinda kindly um, introduced me to the Hub Insiders and it's obviously the best thing I've ever done because I wouldn't have been able to set up my business without it, <laughs> really. Amazing. And when you were um, sort of getting out there and beginning to introduce your service, where did you get your first clients from? Was it friends and family or did you manage to get clients from people that you didn't know? To be honest with you, um, I set up a Facebook page um, and... I posted regularly on it and I started off with I think 250 followers and I've now got 1100 followers on my Facebook page. Wow amazing and that's and if most of my clients come from I've got to be honest. And do you post on your Facebook page regularly? I do I post daily on my Facebook page um, not always promoting my services, you know, I give advice, I post fun things, um, obviously to, to try and gain lots of engagement. But yeah, yeah, I do. I post daily to my Facebook page. 
Amazing. And I know that you've also found that posting in Facebook groups has been a helpful marketing strategy for you as well, haven't you? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I belong to a lot of the Facebook groups regarding paint, colour, design. And I think there are genuinely people, you know, out there who want help with colour on their home. You know, they want their homes to look nice. They want they want to get it right. They don't want to spend a, a fortune on tester pots. You know, they want help yeah. and guidance. Yeah, absolutely. And um, obviously, as I said earlier, you've, you know, you've now got a really busy business. That sabbatical that you took, you never had to go back from it because you have created this wonderful business that fits around your lifestyle and allows you to do the work that you love and that lights you up. Um, thinking back to kind of your earlier years, is there some advice that you'd give to your younger self? Um, knowing now what you didn't know back then? I think I never ever thought, I'm going to be honest with you, I never ever thought about this profession when I was younger. And I think a lot of, I mean, I grew up in London um, and that's where my accounts career was. I mean, I worked for Hamleys, the toy shop in the accounts. I worked for the Grown House Hotel. Okay. So my interest wasn't really there then. Um, and it's only as as I've got older and, as I said, we bought our house that's what really triggered the interest. So, yeah, it, it really came to me later in life. I mean, I didn't qualify in interior design until I was 49. Right. Yeah. And so do you wish that you had started on the journey sooner or do you just think it was right place, right time when it when you did come to it? If I'm honest, I think it was right place, right time for me. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really yeah. have any regrets that I didn't do it earlier because I like the fact that I do it alongside my other little job. Um, I knew it was never, ever going to want to be where I wanted to grow this business. Um, I wanted to take on extra staff. I just love the fact that it fits in with, you know, with, with my lifestyle. Um, and I'm just passionate about it, really. Absolutely. And I think that's really important for people to know as well that, you know, we hear stories from people who are wanting to grow big studios. And as you say, you know, take on staff and things. But equally, you can do this career as a part time career that you fit in around other interests and other jobs as well. 100 percent, Kate. And that's how I feel about mine. It doesn't mean I don't, you know, any less you know, effort or time goes into it because I'm absolutely passionate about what I do and there's nothing yeah. more I like than you know clients messaging me to say we love our room and you know I've, I've even had one say um I come to you because you push me out of my comfort zone and it's not something I would have thought of doing so you know that yeah. gives me you know great pleasure that I mean that's amazing isn't it that is the ultimate feedback yeah. for somebody to you know to be be open and willing to take on something that they would never have thought of and for you to yeah really push them to 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 do something that they would would have felt uncomfortable to do on their own really definitely that's what it's all about amazing um Jane before you go would you be happy to play a game of designer this or that 100% <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I like, a definite answer. OK, so we've got one minute. I'm going to give you um, sets of options and you have to choose which is your favourite. Um, don't overthink it. Just um, go with your gut. And I'm going to start with a really obvious one, which is neutral or colourful? Colourful all the way. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, new or recycled? Mm, I like both, but I'll go new. Leather or vegan? Uh, leather. Brand paints or colour matched? Brand paints. Scandi or boho? Boho. Plumping cushions or karate chopping cushions? All plumping. <laughs> Linen or velvet? Velvet. Glam or rustic? Rustic. Symmetrical or asymmetrical? Or asymmetrical. Fowl and ball or little green? Little green. Victorian or Edwardian? Victorian. Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen or Kelly Hoppen? Oh, I think neither really, but I'll have to go for Lawrence. Sorry. <laughs> but and uh, we are out of time. <laughs> that was a bit of a mean one, was it not? <laughs> it because my, my one I would have chosen wasn't on the list. <laughs> no, you would have gone with Sophie, right? <laughs>
Absolutely. Brilliant. Oh, Jane, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been really interesting to hear about your journey from accountancy to becoming a colour consultant. Can I ask, where can people get in touch with you if they'd like to make use of your colour consultant services? Uh, at the moment, they can find me on Facebook, which is just Jane Holland Colour. Um, I do have a website, but it's in the update of being, sorry, it's in the process of being updated. So um, amazing. Okay. Facebook. So over on your Facebook page. Yeah. Brilliant. All right. Jane, thank you so much for joining us today at the Hubcast. Thanks a lot, Kate. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for tuning into Hubcast by the Interior Designers Hub. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please take a screenshot and share it to Facebook, Instagram, or your favorite social media channel. Make sure to tag me in at Interior Designers Hub and let me know what you enjoyed about this episode. I reply to each and every comment. I'd also like to offer you an incredible free gift which is going to show you the exact roadmap that you need to take to become a wildly successful interior designer. It shares our secrets to business success. If you'd like to get your hands on that, head on over to interiordesignershub.co.uk forward slash roadmap right now. Thanks so much for listening and I'll see you next time.